In this module, we will talk about the confidence interval estimate for ratio of two variances. It is frequently of interest to compare two variances. And one way to do this is to form the ratio. That is sigma 1 square divided by sigma 2 square, where sigma 1 square is the variance from the first population and sigma 2 square is the variance from two pop second population. If two variances are equal, the ratio will be equal to 1. And if the confidence interval for ratio of two population variances includes 1, we conclude that the two population variances may in fact be equal. Usually population variance is unknown. Hence, any comparison is made on the basis of sampled estimates. The use of ratio between two population variances for determining equality of variances has been formalized into a statistical test. This test is referred to as F-max test by Hartley that was given in 1950, or the variance ratio test that was named given by Zarr in 1999 in his book. Since this is a form of inference, we must rely on some sampling distribution. And this time, the distribution of S1 square divided by sigma 1 square divided by S2 square divided by sigma 2 square is utilized provided certain assumptions are met. The first assumption that we look for is that S1 square and S2 square are computed from independent samples of sizes N1 and N2. And the second assumption says that both the samples are drawn from two normally distributed populations. It's pertinent to note that, that we use S1 square to designate the larger of the two sample variances. Since the assumption talk about the two sample variances coming from independent samples and both the samples coming from the normal probability distribution, and if these assumptions met, the ratio for these variances follows a distribution known as the F distribution where F distribution depends on two degrees of freedom, one corresponding to the value of N1 minus one used in computing S1 square, and the second degree of freedom corresponding to the value N2 minus one that is used in computing S2 square. Let's have a look at the behavior of F distribution. Like high square distribution, we can see here as well, that F distribution for various degrees of freedom shows a positively skewed distribution. On the other side, we are given the table for the percentiles of the F distribution, which is used here. The given table is for F when alpha is 0 0.995, where on the row side and the column side, we are given the degrees of freedom for the numerator and the degrees of freedom for the denominator and we use these degrees of freedom to calculate the value for the percentile of the F distribution. So confidence interval estimate for sigma 1 square or divided by sigma 2 square which is a ratio of two variances can be given by solving this expression where the ratio of S1 square over sigma 1 square divided by S2 square over sigma 2 square is in the within the limits F alpha by 2 and F1 minus alpha by 2. Solving it, it gives an expression for the ratio of two variances in 6.10.1 equation, which is S1 square over S2 square divided by F1 minus alpha by 2 as a lower confidence limit, and S1 square divided by S2 square divided by F alpha by 2 as upper confidence limit. Let's take an example. Allen and Gross, they examined toe flexors strength in subjects with plantar fasciitis, pain from heel spurs or general heel pain. A common condition in patients with musculoskeletal problem, inflammation of the plantar fascia is often costly to treat and frustrating for both the patient and clinician. One of the baseline measurement was BMI. Here in our sample, we've looked at 16 women in the study. The standard deviation for BMI for the first group was 8.1. And for four men in the study, the standard deviation was 5.9. We wish to construct 95% confidence interval for the ratio of the variances for of the two normally distributed populations from which we presume these samples were drawn. Let's first check the assumption. The assumption one speaks about that 
both the sample variances are computed from independent samples of sizes n1 and n2. It's very evident that in both the groups, one is of women and other group is of men, which are independent from each other. Hence, the assumption of independence is met. The second assumption speaks about two samples coming from the population that follows the normal distribution. And it has already been shared in the statement that both the samples are drawn from the population having normal distribution. If it hadn't been given, we would simply test for the goodness of it. Hence, the second assumption is fulfilled too. It is very crucial when we measure the confidence interval for the ratio of two variances, how to calculate F values, which will give us the reliability coefficient. And to find F1 minus alpha by 2 and F alpha by 2, it is slightly complex. Here, since we are interested in looking at 95% confidence interval, we look for F 0.975, which is 1 minus alpha by 2 at the degrees of freedom 15 and 3. The value turned out to be 14.25 using the table that was given below. Likewise, for value F 0.025, it turned out to be 0 0.24096. Using these values and calculating the confidence interval estimate, it turned out to be the, the confidence interval estimate for the ratio of two variances is 0 0.1323 and 7.8221 as the lower confidence limit and upper confidence limit, respectively, which gives us the interval appropriate probabilistic and practical interpretation. Since the interval 0 0.1323 to 7.8221 includes 1, we are able to conclude that the two population variances may be equal. Results will be misleading if the normality assumption does not meet. But there are other alternatives to the F test, like Levine's test. It does not make any assumption about the normality of the two populations.